Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Today I'm ready to start my hatchet build. I think it's going to be more like a, a small axe, but um, this is what I'm going to start with. This is a, about a three inch piece of 1045. I'm going to weld this end onto it, and then uh, in a previous video I made this punch um, and uh, this drift. And I've actually made a, a larger drift because I don't think this is big enough for, uh, this is more for a hammer than, uh, than an axe. But let's get going, heat this up, square this up, and then we're going to use the punch. What I'm doing here is measuring where I want the hole for the punch to be so that if I have to flip this over or if I lose track of it, I know exactly where I want that hole punched. So here's where things start to go a little wrong. The punch goes clean through the steel very easily. That part went well. But as you can see, I had a hell of a time getting the punch out, and you'll see why. Well, folks, epic fail on that. <laughs> um, I managed to, well, I managed to punch the hole. Uh, it didn't go quite through. I don't like this, so I'm definitely going to remove that and just have it bottom out. Um, I had to destroy the top part just to get at this, uh, to get it off. I ended up bending the punch, which I'm not worried about that. I can straighten that up. Let me show you why this happened. So right here in my cylinder, if you can see there's holes here. When I put this in, I stupidly did not make the bolts long enough that I could put nuts on them. So this has always just been sitting there, which is fine because it's always been upward pressure. This is the first time I've had downward pressure on the cylinder and that pulled it off of the, uh, of the mounting screws. Uh, the mounting bolts. So now I'm going to have to figure out how to move this thing and get it back on there. Well, I got it jacked up with this janky pipe and jack. Uh, problem is, I really want to replace those bolts at the bottom with longer bolts so that I can uh, really bolt it down and tighten it down with some nuts. So I'm going to have to remove the head because I don't want to work on it when this is here because I don't want this thing to drop on me. All right. So after about three hours of work, I've managed to fix the press. What I've done is taken the, I took the cylinder off, the head off, uh, and then put a new plate, this, this plate underneath um, was welded on. I bolted, I recessed bolts into the back of it um, and then welded that plate on. So there's an inch less of travel, but it had about 10 inches of travel. So it's totally fine. So, all set now. Now that we have the hole punched, it's time to drift the hole, which means stretch it out and make it bigger to the size of the, the eye in the hatchet that we want. I'm starting with this smaller drift, and then I'm gonna move up to a larger drift afterwards. I got some of this anti-seize compound, and this is for drift so they don't stick. Um, I'm putting way too much on and later I realize you just need a really, really light coat and it stops flaming. So this is the step I wish I would have spent more time on. My inexperience with drifting holes comes through here. I didn't actually get the drift perfectly aligned and that comes back and really bites me later. Thank you. 
Here you can see the eye is a little askew. This is a problem. I decided to trudge forward. I moved up to my second drift, which is gonna be the final drift for this project. I'm just hoping at some point that this thing is gonna realign itself with the second drift. Spoiler alert, it doesn't fix it. One thing I really wish I had for this project was a swage block. Uh, and that is uh, basically a big block of steel that has different patterns and it also has holes in it for you to put drifts through. So uh, I had to do this in the end of the anvil and it, it was not ideal. I wanted to start to forge out the blade of the hatchet um, just because I, I didn't want to put the drift all the way in and then do a bunch of forging and then make the eye bigger than I wanted. This is my first attempt at trying to realign the eye with the blade. Um, I tried to press it on one side to try to move some metal around and this doesn't really work that well. Here again with the hammer, I'm trying to realign it. Uh, none of this really works, and had I gotten the eye perfectly aligned, I think this project would have been super quick. All right, here it is after the first forging session. It's got the right shape, but I don't know if you noticed in the video, but I battled for a while on the fact that the eye is a little off-center. It's a little skewed this way. Um, so that's what I need to fix. So I'm going to do a bunch of grinding on this just to just to level this out and get it all um, shaped correctly. Uh, and then I'll probably go back to the forge and uh, you, can, you can see this is almost a quarter inch thick here. Um, I just feel like I, I need to grind it down to where it's all uh, it's all lined up properly then I'll probably go back and forge this a little bigger I was going for a, a kind of a bearded um, hatchet here so I love the shape so let's get to grinding this is still my first Broadbeck incinerator belt it's already gone through three knives and now this hatchet I think it finally hit its end of life on this one, but man, these things are awesome. There's a link down in the description where you can go and get these. So there it is after doing some grinding on it. I think it looks really good now. Better than I expected. It's pretty even. There's just a bit of a curve here. If you look at it from this angle, you can see that the, the blade is kind of this way. So I got to fix that in the forge. But otherwise, it's pretty good. So I took this back into the forge. It's perfectly straight now. So now I'm just gonna do some grinding on it and uh, then we'll normalize it and heat treat it. Here I'm actually starting to put the taper into the edge so it has some good edge geometry and it's great for chopping.
That's a 55 HRC file. And that one's a 60 HRC. So here's the blade after hardening and tempering. Um, now it's time to do some final grinding on it. Here I'm using one of Broadbeck's 120 grit P-Flex belts. Here I'm using a rotary tool with a carbide burr just to clean up the, uh, the edge of the eye and give it a little chamfer. I'm going to work on the handle for this hatchet. So I made this template on knife print and I got this nice piece of hickory. So let's cut it out. All right, I've got the profile of the handle done. Um, I want this to have an oval shape, um, so I probably need to take it down a little bit. Um, yeah, I think probably to about there. After that, what I'm gonna do is, because I want it to be oval this way, I'm gonna just mark this, I'm gonna do it on one side here, probably There's my line of what I'm going to grind to. And then on this side, I'll just make the line probably a little shorter. So that'll give me an angle like this. Something like that. Okay, we got this all carved down. The head of the hatchet fits beautifully on that. Now we need to cut a slot with the bandsaw that we're gonna drive the uh, stake down into. Let's do that. All right, I'm ready to put the wedge in here. So I've got a piece of Purple Heart, which is what we're gonna use for the wedge. I've already kind of taken it down so it's the right um, angle, the right width here. We're just gonna put a little bit of uh, wood glue on it. Both sides, just on the bottom half here. And then, in it goes. there I'm gonna put a little a little couple of hits here but not too many because you don't want to break the top of this what you do is you put this flat and hit the top of it
Hey folks, thanks for joining me on this build. I had a great time making this hatchet. I'm sure I'll be making some more. So stay tuned and we'll see you on the next one. And guys, don't forget, remember to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. We'll see you soon.